Hi guys, my name is Courtney and I just wanted to go over a little information on how I moved from the US to the Netherlands. I just wanted to be able to help someone else that's maybe looking for the same information as I did. Okay, so first you will need to go to the IND website. And you will need to change it to English. And my purpose of stay was to move with my boyfriend, so they classify that as a family member. So now you are on this page. And once again, I said I was moving here to be with my boyfriend, so that would be unmarried partner. Read more. Okay, so I'm just going, going, <laughs> I'm just going to go through the list here and talk about the things that you do and do not need to make the process a little bit easier for you. So, on the first thing here, it says, depending on your nationality, you or your sponsor may need to apply for a provisional residence permit. So, when I go over this list, I'm going to talk about it according to my situation. So, then it goes on to say, a, an MPV is a visa that is issued for a stay longer than 90 days. Okay. Go down to the next line. Not everyone needs an MPV to enter the Netherlands. And this is what causes a lot of confusion with people. You don't need this if you are a, um, a United States um, citizen. So, I will click on MPV. And if you scroll down, it says you will not require an MVV when, and on the second bullet, po bullet point, you have the nationality of one of the following countries, and United States of America is right there. So that is one thing that you do not need to worry about. And I will go back. Okay, and we'll go down to the conditions here. So these are all the, the these are all the conditions that you have to meet um, to um, apply for the residence permit. So it says right here, you and your partner need to meet the following conditions. So both of you need to have um, a well, no, you need to have a valid travel document. For example, passport. So, obviously, if you plan on leaving the country, you need a passport anyways. If you don't, then you should get one as soon as you can. Um, so, just to quickly go over these, you are not a public, um, you are not a risk to public order or national security, no need to worry about that. If you have a clean record, of course. You are willing to undergo a TB test. Um, for one, that's something that you don't need to worry about if you are a citizen of the United States because here it says certain nationalities are exempt from this obligation. So if you click on this link, it will take you to another page and again you will see that the United States of America is exempt. Something else you don't have to worry about. Okay, of course, do not give any false information on the documents. The other Thing is your partner has sufficient long-term means of support. This is pretty much saying that if you plan on moving to another country with your partner, uh, it's pretty known that as soon as you move, you're not going to have a job and a means to support yourself right away. So what they don't want is someone coming over and your partner maybe is just getting by on his or her own and then for someone else to come along and then they have to try to support that person and maybe there's not enough money for the both of you and then um, maybe you're relying on government resources to help you stay there so your partner needs to have enough money for um, to support the both of you until you are getting on your feet and if you click here There is, uh, 
Oh, how much do you need to earn? Income requirements, family members, and relatives. You can click on that link. And cost and income requirements. Income requirements. And I believe I looked at this here. Um, oh, so you're wanting to stay with a spouse or unmarried partner. So married couples and unmarried couples living together, this needs to be their income in order for you um, to be able to be approved for your residence permit. So, I will go back, back again, okay, where was I? You have passed the civic integration examination abroad or you are exempt from this examination. Again, with the MVV that I mentioned earlier in the video, if you had to fulfill that requirement, then yes, you would need to do the civic integration exam. But since you are exempt from the MVV requirement, you are also exempt from the civic integration examination. Okay, you are both 21 and older. Uh, let's see, you are both unmarried. Um, that's just kind of common sense there. Um, and I do have something to touch on with uh, this here, but we'll get back to that. You have a long-term and exclusive relationship with your partner. Okay, so for that one, you will need to prove that um, you guys have had a long-term and exclusive relationship. And um, when we turned in the application, they actually wanted to see um, pictures of us together. So it's not like I went and grabbed some guy out on the street and say and said, hey, can you help me, um, you know, get a permit to uh, move here in the, Nether in the Netherlands? They want to actually see pictures um, of you, and there's a whole questionnaire and everything to fill out, but um, that will come a little bit later in the video. Your partner has signed the sponsor's declaration. Um, again, that's another um, form that needs to be filled out between the, the two of you. There's a questionnaire and other information that is needed from both parties. When your partner holds a temporary residence permit with a non-temporary purpose of stay, blah, blah, blah. So, for example, this situation here, I do not know about that. Um, my partner is a natural-born citizen from the Netherlands, so this we do not have to worry about. And here, you will live with your partner as soon as you arrive in the, in the Netherlands. And your partner has to be registered in the... Municipal Personal Records Database, so whatever city that your partner is living in, most likely they should be registered in their town, and you will also need to register um, yourself when you arrive in that city at that same address. Okay, and documents. So you will need copies of all of the pages of your passport, including the stamps if you've traveled to any other places. The blank pages aren't needed. And for your partner, if they have a du uh, Dutch passport or their identity card, then they will need copies of that also. For um, my partner, we used his Dutch passport because it actually shows all of the stamps um, from when we have traveled back and forth visiting each other, so I wasn't sure if maybe they also use that as a way to see if um, you guys were, you know, meeting up and, um, you know, as a way of maintaining the relationship visiting each other and to make sure it's legit. I'm not sure if that's what they use it for, but that's what we were kind of thinking as another reason. Um, so again, there, okay, proof of your partner's income. So yes, they will need copies of their income statements. I thought um, it had to be 12 months worth, but I was told from 
the woman that three months uh, was sufficient. So we actually gave them a little bit too much, so she gave us some of the sheets back. And in the form, there's an appendix uh, proof of income. And I think I can find that paperwork and I can show you. If not, I'll just leave links to all of that information in the description box. And again, here, you're exempt from that, so you do not need... Um, any proof of that and as far as proof that you're exempt you being a US citizen that's your proof. Proof that you are both unmarried um, for your Dutch partner it's easy for them to check their status their married or unmarried status so your partner doesn't need anything but for you um, what I did was I believe it was the clerk and recorder's office I had an affidavit written up stating that there was no record of a marriage involving me in that county and that was actually um, sufficient enough and I did have to send that off to get an apostille because it says here please note that an official foreign document must be translated and legalized so um, what I did was I typed in for example I was living in Colorado and I put um, like Colorado apostille and I, there was some uh, government site or state site that um, led me to um, the information I needed to send that off and the form of payment they accepted and the process, how long it takes for them to send it back, etc. And a sponsor's declaration filled in and signed. Again, that's the paperwork that you need to turn in with all of the documents that they're asking for and again I'll leave that in the description box below and here the cost and fees um, applying for the residence permit is not free and if you click here there should be a table of fees and how much does an application cost so for me it was with a family member or relative. Cost. Okay, so what we had to pay was this here. Because this is your purpose of stay, to be with a family member or a relative. And like I said, if you're staying with um, your partner, your spouse, it is considered family member or relative. So that's what we had to turn in when we applied for the permit. And back, let's see. So that went over the cost. Um, so actually, here's the paperwork I was talking about. So I was actually here visiting for one month when we turned in my application. So we turned it in directly to the IND office here in Rotterdam, but I know not everyone will have that option. But for what we did, we um, I did it as a, I was turning it in myself, not that um, he was filling out everything for me and turning it in. So I clicked on this here and um, it gives you all the information, the whole paperwork packet that you need, and just like the requirements I'm going through, there's some things that you're exempt from. So in this paperwork, it will have sheets for everything, and again, you just have to read through and make sure that if there's things that don't apply to you, uh, leave those forms out or skip over the sections. You do not have to fill out every single thing. For example, there's things about um, the civic integration exam, I believe. So since you're exempt, you don't have to worry about that. There's a form for the TB test, and again, you don't need to worry about that stuff. So just make sure you read through carefully and focus on what you personally need. And this is just talking about the residence um, document. So like on my permit, it states my employment status, that I don't need to have a work permit. On my card, uh, my ID card, um, 
yeah, I'm good to work with that. I don't need any supplement um, to that, you know, allowing me to work. And this is just talking about how long the residence permit is typically good for. Um, mine I got in April of 2015. That's when it was approved. And it expires in April of 2020. So, yeah, five years. Um, so that should cover everything. If you have any questions, you can leave them, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Again, this information was for an American citizen that is wanting to move to the Netherlands to be with their Dutch partner. So, thank you for watching, and I really hope that I helped someone um, clear up some confusion. And I will see you on the next video. Bye! First, um, since I was wanting to move here with my boyfriend, on the IND website, you will need the application to um, stay with an unmarried partner or family, I believe um, they have it listed that way. Also, you will need copies of your passports, just the main page and any pages that have stamps to show where you've traveled. You will also need an affidavit of your non-married status. You can get that from your county clerk and recorder's office. Uh, it's essentially a paper um, stating that you are not married or in a registered partnership with anyone in the United States. Um, also, you will need your birth certificate. It cannot be a, um, a photocopy. Um, next, for those two documents, the birth certificate and um, affidavit of non-married status, you will need to get an apostille on those two documents. First, for the affidavit of non-married status, you can get that apostille through the Secretary of State of the state that issued that affidavit. You can go to the Secretary of State's website and search um, notary services or apostille and you can send uh, those documents in usually there's like a short form they want you to send in with it and um, along with your form of payment it was really easy it took just um, a week total for me to send the documents off and retrieve them back and um, yeah it was I believe less than five dollars um, to have that done and also, um, for me, I was living uh, in a different state. I had my birth certificate, and I had to send it off to another state um, of where I was born. And I just followed the same procedure. Just go to the Secretary of State website, um, search apostille or um, notary services, and they should give you the information that you need to send off your documents. Another thing that you will need is your partner's work contract. Um, one of the guidelines on them approving your residence permit is um, income. They want to make sure that there's means to support two people, at least, um, for you moving there. They understand that you need time to adjust, maybe learn the language, and you won't have a job right away. And I believe the minimum income for two people was around 1,600 euros. Uh, that information is also um, on the IND website. Uh, back to the initial application from IND. Um, just a little quick tip. Um, there's a questionnaire in there about your relationship regarding how you met, how long you've been dating, if the family approves of the relationship, and how you kept the relationship going for the time that you were separated. And um, honestly, there's not a lot of room to elaborate on very important questions because this is what your a residence permit is kind of hanging on here, is this information. So I was actually here visiting my boyfriend when we planned to turn in the paperwork. So we went to the IND um, office and had someone look over our paperwork to see if we were missing anything to avoid delays. The lady recommended that um, we attach a separate sheet of paper and type a little summary on how we met, um, if the family is supportive of our relationship, how we kept things going, um, and such, instead of writing um, 
very minimal information on the limited space that they give you on the actual application. So just write a quick summary about your, um, your relationship and that should take care of that situation. Also, another thing she recommended is to include a few photos of you two. Um, she had made a little joke with us about, well, we also want to know that, you know, someone wanting to apply for a permit didn't just, uh, you know, meet someone outside and, you know, drag them in here uh, to fill out something. So, um, luckily with me and my boyfriend, we visited each other um, many times went on many vacations together during that time so we had a ton of pictures so uh, we got some of the best ones and sent them in with the application now um, since i was actually here visiting at the time that we turned in the application they went ahead and did my fingerprints and my photo for my residence permit in the event that it was approved so um, they have um, 90 days, I believe, to give your response after you turn in your application. And since I did all of the steps I mentioned, um, adding in the extra form, um, like the extra um, little story about how we met, the photos, there was no delay at all. So they said that they can take up to 90 days. I got a response in 29 days. I had actually just got back to the U.S. from my visit here, and I think about two to three days later, my boyfriend sent me um, the letter saying that my permit was approved. So since my photo and my fingerprints had already been taken when I moved here in November of 2015, from the airport, we went straight to the IND office and picked up my residence permit. So if you do not have the option of turning in your application in person, uh, once you arrive in the Netherlands, you can actually go to the IND office, which I think you have to schedule an appointment, and you can have your fingerprints and photo taken then if your um, permit was approved, but you couldn't turn the application in in person. You just sent it in. Then once you arrive, you can take care of that stuff, and then your permit will um, be ready for you to pick up at a later time. So I hope I didn't forget anything. Um, I hope I made it easier for some of you that are looking to move from the U.S. to the Netherlands because it was a big hassle. So um, yeah, if you have any other questions, just leave um, a comment below and I'll try to help you out the best that I can. Um, again, everyone's situation uh, may be a little bit different, but if you need help um, with the application, I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching.